Hello everybody and welcome back. This is yours truly, B9400, and yet another mini-biographical piece on controversial figures of the American Civil War. Today's episode focuses on the life and crimes of John Harrison Surratt Jr., who is best remembered as one of John Wilkes Booth's co-conspirators in his plot to kidnap the 16th President of the United States, Republican Abraham Lincoln. John Harrison Surratt Jr. was born in 1844 to John Harrison Surratt Sr. and Mary Elizabeth Jenkins Surratt in what is today Congress Heights. His baptism took place in 1844 at St. Peter's Church, Washington, D.C. In 1861, he was enrolled at St. Charles's College, where he was studying for the priesthood, and also met Louis Weichmann. When his father suddenly died in 1862, Surratt was appointed the postmaster for Surrattsville, Maryland. Surratt Jr. was an American Confederate spy who was accused of plotting with John Wilkes Booth to kidnap U.S. President Republican Abraham Lincoln. He was also suspected of an involvement in the Abraham Lincoln assassination. His mother, Mary Surratt, was convicted of conspiracy by a military tribunal and hanged. She owned the boarding house that, that the conspirators used as a safe house and to plot the scheme. He eluded arrest following the assassination by fleeing to Canada and then to Europe. He thus avoided the fate of the other conspirators who were hanged. He briefly served as a pontif pontifical Zuefa, I probably butchered that, but was recognized and arrested. He escaped to Egypt, North Africa, but was eventually arrested and extradited. By the time of his trial, the statute of limitations had expired on most of the potential charges, which meant that he was never charged with any crime. Plot to Kidnap President Lincoln Surratt served as a Confederate Secret Service courier and spy after he had been carrying dispatches about Union troop movements across the Potomac River. Dr. Samuel Mudd introduced Surratt to Booth on December 23, 1864 and Surratt Jr. agreed to help Booth kidnap Lincoln. The meeting took place at the National Hotel in Washington, D.C., where Booth lived. Booth's plan was to seize Lincoln and take him to Richmond, Virginia, to exchange him for thousands of Confederate prisoners of war. On March 17, 1865, Surratt and Booth, along with their comrades, waited in ambush for Lincoln's carriage to leave the Campbell General Hospital to return to Washington. However, President Lincoln had changed his mind and remained behind in Washington instead. William H. Crook, one of President Lincoln's bodyguards, claimed that Surratt Jr. had boarded the River Queen vessel shortly before the Battle of Petersburg, Virginia, using the name of Smith and demanding to see the president demanding to see President Lincoln, who was aboard at the time. Crook later stated his belief that Surratt Jr was seeking an opportunity to assassinate the president at this time. The Assassination of President Abraham Lincoln After the assassination of President Lincoln at Washington, D.C.'s Ford's Theater on April the 14th, 1865, Surratt Jr. denied any involvement and said that he was then in Elmira, upstate New York. He was one of the first people suspected of the attempt to assassinate Secretary of State William H. Seward, but the culprit was soon discovered to be a Lewis Powell, though. In hiding. When he learned of the assassination, Surratt Jr. fled across the border to Montreal, Quebec, Canada, <clears throat> arriving on the 17th of April, 1865, where he was given sanctuary by a Catholic priest named Father Charles Boucher. Surratt Jr. remained here whilst his mother, Mary Surratt, was arrested, tried, and eventually hanged back across the border in the United States for conspiracy to assassinate the 16th President of the United States. Aided by ex-Confederate agents Beverly Tucker and Edwin Lee, Surratt, disgui Surratt disguised, booked passage under a false name. He landed at Liverpool, England in September, where he lodged in the oratory at the Church of the Holy Cross. Surratt would later serve for a time in the Ninth Company of the Pontifical Zuaf Zuafas, I probably butchered that, in the Papal States under the name John Watson. An old friend, Henri Beaumont de Sainte Marie, recognized Surratt Jr. and notified papal officials and the U.S. minister in Rome, Rupus King. Henri was introduced to John Surratt Jr. and Louis Weichmann in April 1863 at St. Joseph's Catholic School in the town then known as Ellen Gowen, or Little Texas, now part of Cockeysville, having been hired by F Farber Maloney at the request of Maria Padian. 
Although Canadian, Henri wanted to join the, Con the Confederate Army when the Civil War broke out, Henri traveled to New York and boarded the ship that was, that was to run the blockade of the southern states. However, the ship, however, was captured by a United States war steamer, and Saint Sainte Marie, with his fellow voyagers, was thrown into Fort McHenry as a prisoner of war. Henri was released through the intervention of the English consul since he was a British subject. Henri was stranded in Baltimore, Maryland with little money, and his plan was to move into a cheap boarding house and to get a job to earn some money. Fate intervened, and one day an old farmer living in the countryside outside of Baltimore, Maryland, came to his place. Henri related his misfortunes to the old farmer, who took mercy on him and gave him a job on his farm. Henri accepted the job offer, but it was on his farm that Marie Padian happened to pay a visit to Santa Marie's benefactor to collect money for the church of, at Little Texas. Maria was a very active member of St. Joseph's Catholic Church, not, visit, not only visiting to collect money for the church, but also a member of the Texas Fancy Table at the 1895 church fair, and even donating a stained glass window. Maria was also the daughter of Richard Padian, for whom Pedonia Road, as well as the old North Central Railroad stop, Pedonia Station, was named. By all accounts, Maria, single, and for whom most eligible men her age were off fighting in the Civil War, was bowled over by Henri and strongly captivated with his polished manners. Good looks, handsome, brown eyes, refined conversation, and general education, and listened early to the recital of his adventures and made a plea to Father Mahoney to hire her new friend for the school. On November 7, 1866, Surat Jr. was arrested and sent to the Velletri prison. He escaped and lived with the supporters of Garibaldi, who gave him safe passage. Surat traveled to the Kingdom of Italy and posed as a Canadian citizen named Walters. He, the, he booked passage to Alexandria, Egypt, North Africa. He was arrested there by U.S. officials on the 23rd of November, 1866, still in his pontifical Zouaib's uniform. He returned to the U.S. on the USS Swatara to the Washington Navy Yard in early 16, 1867. Excuse me. Subsequent trial. Eighteen months after his mother was hanged, Surratt Jr. was tried in a Maryland civilian court. It was not before a military commission, unlike the trials of his mother and the others, as a U.S. Supreme Court, Supreme court decision, ex parte Milligan, had declared the trial of civilians before military tribunals to be unconstitutional if civilian courts were still open. Judge David Carter presided over Surratt's trial, and Edwards Pierpont conducted the federal government's case against him. Surratt's lead attorney, Joseph Habersham Bradley, admitted Surratt's plot in, kid in plot to kidnap President Lincoln, but denied any involvement in the murder plot. After two months of testimony, Surratt was released after a mistrial. Eight jurors had voted not guilty, four voted guilty. The statute of limitations on charges over the murder had run out, and Surratt Jr. was released on bail. Later life and subsequent death. Surratt Jr. tried to farm tobacco and then taught at the Rockbell, Rockville Female Academy in 1870. As one of the last surviving members of the conspiracy, Surratt began a much heralded public lecture tour. On December 6, at a small courthouse in Rockville, Maryland, <clears throat> in a 75-minute long speech, Surratt admitted his involvement in the scheme to kidnap President Lincoln. However, he maintained that he knew nothing of the assassination plot and reiterated that he was then in Elmira, upstate New York. He disavowed any participation by the Confederate government, reviled Weichmann as a perjurer who was responsible for his mother's death, and said his friends had kept him had kept from him in the seriousness of her plight in Washington, D.C. After that revelation, it was reported in Washington's Evening Star that the band played Dixie and a small concert was improvised with Surratt Jr., the center of female attention. Three weeks later, Surratt was given a second lecture in Washington, D.C., but it was later canceled because of public outrage. Surratt Jr. later took a job as a teacher in St. Joseph Catholic School in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In 1872, Surratt Jr. married Mary Victorine Hunter, a second cousin of Francis Scott Key. The couple lived in Baltimore, Maryland, and had seven children. Sometime after 1872, he was hired by the Baltimore Steam Packet Company, he rose to freight auditor and ultimately treasurer of the company. Surratt 
Jr. retired from the steamship line in 1914 and died of pneumonia subsequently in 1916 at the age of 72. He is buried in the New Cathedral Cemetery in Baltimore. This concludes another episode of Controversial Figures of the Civil War, and this has been yours truly, B9400. And if you enjoyed today's episode, then please be sure to subscribe so I can continue to produce more content of this nature for you. By the way, apologies for the late upload, as I've fallen a bit behind as, as of late due to construction work currently taking place at my house right now. See you in the next episode.